Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Admiral Aldo is probably one of the most controversial figures in the sequel trilogy. She's faced much scorn and derision for not only her appearance, but also her actions during the Resistance's evacuation from Dakar. Some of her biggest detractors have labeled her Admiral Gender Studies because of her likeness to a militant feminist professor at a community college. I too have had my own misgivings about her and her actions, and I've questioned her leadership abilities in a video before. But now that some time has passed since The Last Jedi came out, I feel like I can finally take a look at one of the biggest questions surrounding her actions during the evacuation to Dakar. You see, many fans believe that Admiral Holdo was a First Order spy. After all, her behavior when she takes over the fleet is not only strange, but borderline traitorous. And so, let's take a closer look at Emilyn Holdo, the eccentric girl from Gatalanta. Even our most hated enemies and our most valued heroes all started out life as children, clueless, full of wonder and hope. Unless you are, of course, a Jedi youngling sometime around 19 BBY. Emil and Holdo was born on the planet of Gathalenta. She was a relatively privileged child living in this very luxurious core world. Gathalenta was an extremely tranquil planet. It was culturally aligned with worlds like Alderaan and Naboo, and was famous for their tea, exhaustingly long poetry, and spiritual retreats. This was an advanced world ruled by a council of mothers. This was a matriarchal society that was vehemently opposed to slavery. Even though slavery was outlawed by the Galactic Republic's constitution, the practice of slavery was quite common, especially in the Outer Rim. And even in the more supposedly civilized core worlds, slavery was still present, just under a different name. The people of Gatalanta were seen as extremely calm and serene. They cherished love and compassion because they probably had the luxury to do so because they were in the core regions of the galaxy. They practiced a calisthenic exercise known as skyfaring, which is quite similar to our own world's practice of aerial silks. The practice of skyfaring was supposedly quite spiritual. After all, one is unmoored from the ground and suspended in the air, and so it was a great place for Gatalentans to meditate. The practice was so important that the Gatalentan senatorial complex on Coruscant actually had its own dedicated skyfaring room. It was also common practice for the people of Gatalanta to cry openly. This was proof that they had virtue and a caring heart. Now, I know for some of our more masculine viewers out there, the idea of aerial silks and crying openly triggers them in the most visceral and primal way. But I would argue that a true man should be able to stomp some Xeno baby skulls and wipe the blood off of their boots and appreciate some fine aerial silking. Not only does this activity require great core strength and mental discipline, but a good cry every now and then can allow you to be more emotionally stable and at peace when you're crushing your Xeno enemies and watching them driven before you as you hear the lamentations of their women. Like so many individuals in the Resistance and the Rebellion, Emilian Holdo had a very contrarian and independent spirit. And so she rejected the calm nature of her people and dyed her hair many different colors to remind people that she was different. But the spirit of that matriarchal society she grew up in greatly shaped her reality and her view of the relationship between man and woman, in the same way a man growing up in a patriarchal society would. And so for better or worse, Emilian Holdo's view of the sexes and men was solidified at a very early age. While Emilian dabbled in sky faring, she also really enjoyed spelunking, tobogganing, and driving around very fast in speeders. Like Anakin, like Luke, and even Obi-Wan Kenobi, when Vice Admiral Holdo was a child, she was a degenerate who loved speed and octane. In her studies, Emilyn Holdo, like any other privileged Gatalentan child, would study public service and also philosophy, but her true calling in life was astrology. In 3 BBY, Holdo was selected to represent Gatalenta in the Apprentice Legislature, a holdover from the Galactic Republic era. It was here that many famous politicians from Padme Amidala to Mon Mothma would practice their politicking before entering the big leagues. It was here that Emil and Holdo would meet a young Princess Leia from Alderaan. The two shared many similarities and political views, and so together they would attempt to shape imperial policy. Contrary to popular belief, the early imperial period still had a functioning senate, which did wield a certain amount of power and dissent against the emperor. Holdo would also meet individuals like Grand Moff Wilhuff Tarkin, and even Galactic Emperor Sheev Palpatine herself. 
She probably saw the concept of men holding power as quite strange because she is, after all, from a matriarchal society. And also, Will of Tarkin and she Palpatine aren't really great examples of good male leadership. At the same time, the more pro-imperial members of the legislature would deride Holdo for her flamboyant style and treasonous views against the Empire. It was only natural that Emil and Holdo would begin to despise the Empire and become a dissenter. At the same time, she would grow closer to Princess Leia. She would not only become her friend, but trusted confidant. Together, the two would go on many adventures on Coruscant and abroad as a part of a youth pathfinding organization. This was essentially like any other youth program, but with a heavy emphasis on extreme survival training. Eventually, Princess Leia would let Holdo know about her anti-imperial activities, which were being sponsored by her adopted father, Bail Organa, and Chandrillan Senator Mon Mothma. Emil and Holdo was a natural fit for the rebellion. Holdo became Princess Leia's trusted ally, and together they would go on several undercover rebellion missions. Together they would mourn the loss of friends while encountering very dangerous situations, and they would grow closer. Meanwhile, back on Coruscant, they would still maintain the appearance of being loyal imperial politicians. Amelia and Holdo's duplicity here should be noted, but I doubt any serious Imperial believed that she was loyal to the Empire. By the time the Battle of Yavin breaks out, Princess Leia and Emil and Holdo both leave Imperial politics. While Organa becomes one of the main leaders of the rebellion, Emilian Holdo becomes a minister for the fledgling Alliance civil government, which is in control of nothing. She spends her time traveling around and giving anti-imperial speeches, but other than that, her contribution to the war effort was minuscule. But then one day, while hitching a ride on the rebel weapon smuggling vessel Kandor, a Star Destroyer interdicts them with a tractor beam. The captain of the Kandor is immediately killed in the first offensive salvo. Emil and Holdo, being the highest ranking individual on the ship, takes command of the bridge. She begins issuing orders to the crew and has them turn the ship around as it's being drawn into the Star Destroyer's hold. She has the Kandor fire upon the tractor beam control system from inside the hangar. The tactic works and punches a hole clean through the Star Destroyer, allowing the Kandor to escape. The crew of the Kandor had initially not trusted the purple-haired minister, but she had proven herself in this situation and won a captain's commission in the Rebel Alliance Navy as a result. The Alliance would win the Galactic Civil War and the New Republic would squander that hard won piece through infighting and a lack of decisive action. The First Order would return with the former Empire's vengeance. Not much is known about Amelia and Holdo's actions during the interwar periods, but she is one of the first individuals that Princess Leia recruits into her newly founded resistance. During the Cold War period, Holdo would be sent with a small resistance task force to investigate whether the New Republic Defense Force was being purposely mishandled by Imperial sympathizers within the New Republic High Command. Vice Admiral Holdo would be paired with the legendary Nin Nub on one mission. Eventually, Holdo would be placed in command of the Ninka, a cruiser that was home to Blue Squadron and Crimson Squadron. Even though Vice Admiral Holdo had a very suspicious gap in her resume between the Rebellion and the Resistance, I really highly doubt that she was a mole or contacted by the First Order during that period. Especially because, by all indications, she was one of the early recruits within the Resistance and had probably joined the organization before the First Order even realized it existed. Furthermore, her childhood friendship to Leia is a much more likely reason for why she was recruited into the organization in the first place. During the operation of Dakar, when she takes control of the entire Resistance fleet, she was placed in a very difficult situation. Her small fleet of ships is being chased down by a massive First Order fleet. Only her command ship, the Radis, seems to have enough fuel and power and shields to outrun their impending doom. Then there's that injury to General Princess Leia weighing in on her mind. These two were much more than just colleagues, they were very close friends. Now, her initial hostility towards Poe Dameron seems bewildering and strange for a commanding officer. From a viewer's point of view, Captain Dameron had done nothing to evoke such ire and hostility. But there are two factors at play here that the audience might not know about. One is that as the commander of the Ninka, Vice Admiral Holdo had also been in command of Cobalt and Crimson Squadron. Both of these squadrons were lost when Poe Dameron disobeyed Princess Leia's orders and engaged both squadrons in order to destroy a First Order Dreadnought, which had been moments away from destroying the Resistance fleet. While Poe Dameron's actions and sacrifice ultimately were correct and ensured the survival of the Resistance, it was a costly action and also an illegal action in the eyes of Vice Admiral Holdo. And because of her background as a Gathalentan, she most likely had some misandrous viewpoints. Misandry is basically the opposite of misogyny. 
This is an individual who despises or is strongly prejudiced against men. Remember guys, this is the Star Wars galaxy. It's very different from our own. And if you have a matriarchal society, it's gonna encounter the same problems as a heavily patriarchal society. And so when Poe Dameron approaches Vice Admiral Holdo to ask her what's going on, Vice Admiral Holdo, who is caught in a very stressful situation, doesn't really do her best to ensure her subordinates that she knows what's going on. As you take in a breath and realize that Poe Dameron was not a misogynist, but just an eager pilot trying to do his best to protect those he loved and cherished, she wouldn't have been nearly as hostile towards him, and perhaps trusted him enough to let him in on the decision-making process, or at least inform him about her plans. Sure, there was the possibility that the First Order had infiltrated her fleet, but Poe Dameron is clearly loyal to the cause and no more of a spy than Vice Admiral Holder herself. And also, judging by Holdo's past experience as an eccentric woman who was oftentimes derided by her colleagues, it's clear that she lacks the social skills and leadership abilities that someone like Princess Leia would have. Vice Admiral Holdo's inability to communicate with her most capable officer, Poe Dameron, ultimately led to many difficult issues, including a mutiny. Poe Dameron is also to blame here. His lack of trust in the Resistance command structure and Princess Leia's orders, which were passed down from Holdo, are not to be forgotten. But ultimately, Vice Admiral Holdo was placed in charge of this fleet, and so she bears the brunt of the responsibility of what happens. Her decision to evacuate the Resistance to create aboard several old U-55 orbital transports was costly. This part of the plan was uniquely hers, but she did rectify her mistakes by making the ultimate sacrifice by performing the famous Holdo maneuver. Vice Admiral Holdo was an eccentric tactician who oftentimes made mistakes, but then also showed rare moments of brilliance. But her inability to lead a diverse group of individuals with different needs is why she was just a Vice Admiral and not the leader of the Resistance. But still, she filled in when the Resistance needed her the most and she made the best out of an extremely terrible situation. So yeah, I don't think Vice Admiral Holdo is a First Order spy. There's just too much in her background to point towards her being a legitimate resistance operative. I think the First Order would never accept someone like her in the first place. Well, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about my analysis. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.